meeting. Uh, we ask that you turn off or silence all cell phones. Uh, meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 6 p.m. and at midnight and available for viewing on YouTube. At this time, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by silent meditation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we're going to have a proclamation in celebration of the Juneteenth. Excuse me if I start sweating. It's hot in the fish grease right now. <laughs> <laughs> On January the 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation freeing all persons held as slaves in the Confederate States. And whereas when Union troops entered Galveston Bay, Texas on June 19, 1865, the enslaved black people of Galveston, Texas finally learned that they had been free for two years. And whereas June 19th became the recognized day of celebration and called Juneteenth Freedom Day by the former enslaved people of Galveston, Texas, and whereas the new freely freed people began to migrate to other parts of the country, they shared the celebration of Juneteenth in their new black communities, and the celebration has spread throughout our country. And whereas Juneteenth is a day of grave remembrance of a dark period in our nation's history, it is also a day of recognition of hope for the descendants of the black people who survived enslaved, enslavement. And whereas our country continues to heal, the recognition of Juneteenth as a federal holiday renews the hope that our country's promise of freedom and equality for all Americans can come true. And whereas the citizens of Leavenworth, Kansas, will gather on June 18th, 2022, to celebrate <coughs> Juneteenth with the parade and festivals uh, because sharing traditions with fellow community members create strong bonds that transcend differences. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Pro Tem of the city of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby congratulate and recognize 2022 celebration of Juneteenth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, thank you to the commissioners and the citizens of Leavenworth. We really appreciate this proclamation, and we look forward to celebrating with everybody on Saturday. Thank you. Uh, next item, old business. A consideration of previous meeting minutes. Any comments, discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we uh, approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Second. A uh, motion has been seconded. Begin voting with uh, Commissioner uh, Hingula. Uh, aye. 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 Motion carried 4-0. Uh, next item on the agenda, a uh, second consideration ordinance, uh, second consideration ordinance number 8187, rezoning 1830 South Broadway Street from plan unit development uh, to residential mixed use district. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and Commission, there are no changes from the first consideration. As a very quick reminder, this is the rezoning of the Council on Aging uh, following the re uh, moving out of the Council on Aging uh, to the new uh, former Cushing Hospital. Is there any comments? No. If not, uh, this requires a roll call, beginning with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 All right, five, four, zero. Uh, next item on the agenda, new business. Um, this is open for public comments. Comments are limited to three minutes, and no action will be taken by the commission on public comment uh, on comment items. Please state your name and address. A sign-up sheet will be provided in the commission chambers for anyone wishing to speak. First up is Haley Shaw. 
Good evening. Good evening. I just want to take the opportunity to thank you, Mayor Wilson and the Commission, for granting me the opportunity to speak here tonight. So my name is Haley Shaw, and I'm a resident of 317 North Esplanade Street. I have lived here in Leavenworth for seven years. Um, in that time, along Esplanade, um, we have witnessed and experienced excessive speeding in a variety of different forms. Um, there are not stop signs, and it, is, it has become a thoroughfare for people um, personally or individuals attempting to get to the gate because they're running late in the morning. Hmm. However, the issue is there's parking on both sides of the street. Um, there are elderly individuals. There's myself, my two-year-old son, and we have new additional children that have just moved into a residence on the street. It has become an issue. Um, also adding on to that the fact that a lot of these drivers, um, we have been asked to watch to see who it is, what, they're, what are they doing, um, and we've noticed that a lot of the time they're on their cell phones. So people are speeding and they're just not paying attention and there are no crosswalks. It's a dangerous situation. Also, the residential area fronts up to the North Esplanade Park and other sections of the street are 20 miles an hour. So we are just asking for the opportunity to consider uh, amending the street uh, speed limit or perhaps looking at other affordable um, options as in maybe two speed bumps at um, select areas of the street that would just in essence reduce speed um, naturally. Uh, that is what I would like to share and if possible I'd like to um, grant my fellow residents an opportunity to share because they have been a resident for a much longer time than I have. Yeah, thank you. Thank you ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you. Appreciate it. Who else is on the list? Uh, Mr. William Potter. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, hearing, hearing us. Uh, William Connor, 409 North Esplanade <coughs> Street. Um, I would just say North Esplanade right now, as I think about it, is the only north-south thoroughfare through the city that has no stop lines, stop lights, or anything retarding the speed. You add to that the high density um, effect of the stove loft apartments, people coming north on North Esplanade Street know this, and at, during the morning rush hour, it's quite like the uh, start of the Indianapolis 500 uh, as far as people rapping and, and uh, flying along. Uh, so I, and again, absolutely the only street I know of going north-south that has no, in that particular uh, area of from north to south has no stop signs or anything uh, or any other speed reduction measures. So I too have noticed the speed with which it goes and as uh, Haley said there are another family has moved in that has children on the block. I know another fa there, there are other families that have children right on North Esplanade. So I think it has gotten to a point that if nothing else there uh, a, another option might be a traffic survey to corroborate, uh, one suggestion we were given when I brought it up before with a commissioner was that, well, the uh, city, uh, the city uh, administration has suggested you take pictures of the uh, cars with your cell phone. That's a bit impractical. Uh, so I would ask you all to consider that if you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? And to Julie Shaw and Elena Meek. Hello, I'm Eslita Meek, and my husband and I, his name is Stephen Meek, have lived on North Esplanade for over 20 years now. There are no limits on that road for people who want to get to work or to play or to school or whatever they need to do in a hurry. They come down our street. And uh, sometimes you think it's... Deliberate that they're using loud mufflers or whatever it is that makes a real loud roar. And we have the train that goes by there, so we don't need any more noise pollution. Um, I would very much like to see signs put out that the young children are about. You see those in other towns where it says deaf child or children playing or something of that sort. And uh, we certainly do have that situation on our street. 
We had the swings down at the south end of North Esplanade. A lot of people use that park for recreation. They come just to see the traffic in the bridge. And it is a very nice symbol for Leavenworth that we have a first city park, the first park in Kansas. So I uh, very much appreciate your consideration and hope that you will vote for some type of measure to either slow down the speeders or make them consider what might happen if they don't. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. very much. All right, first off, thank you guys for hearing me today. Miranda Lynch was and is a beautiful, caring, thoughtful, talented, brilliant 16-year-old young lady. She should be 17 now, but that's not the case. She was taken from us by a drunk driver August 7th of last year. Miranda was the third of our four girls. She was admired and looked up to by her three sisters and all her cousins. Reasons like she was always smiling, so giggly, you know, just happy. She was the one who reached out to everyone with little funny memes or messages just to say, hey, she didn't have favorites. She wanted to be a part of everybody's life. She was the one, if you needed something done, she was the first to volunteer. Didn't matter what it was. Like, hey, you know, who wants to help rake and bag leaves? She'd be the one trying to do the most. She's also very competitive. She was the tomboy of the bunch. She was into boy things, you know, like cars, jeeps, playing in the mud, fishing, building bug houses, army stuff, things like that. She was very athletic. She ran faster than anyone in the family. Me and her used to ride bikes all over this town. Every parking lot, every sidewalk, trails, off-road, on-road, you name it, we cruised it. Everywhere I look, I see her or a, or a picture of her, us riding somewhere. I also see other people on bikes that resemble her, and I catch myself, you know, staring and realizing that it's not her. That's just a few of the many things that made Miranda such an amazing young lady. But we're here to talk about a community, a community that needs and appreciates the awareness that my daughter's memorial brings to 4th Street. We have an online petition with over 5,265 signatures and 234 comments from the community supporting us and keeping it right where it stands. It takes time to do this petition. You gotta type your name, your email address, click this, click that, and 5,265 people have done that. And it just keeps going up. The comments are so sweet and kind, people saying things like how beautiful it is, how it's not distracting, how the family needs this, and how Miranda deserves this since everything else was taken from her and her family. Miranda's memorial raises awareness for drunk driving, bicyclists, and actually more than that. We had a lady stop while we was at the memorial a few weeks ago and told us that she uses Miranda's story to get her kids to wear a helmet when riding their bikes. Her memorial also helps slow down traffic on 4th Street. We see people go flying through 4th Street right after they leave the 20 mile an hour spot downtown. You just hear them step on it, but once they get to Miranda's spot, we hear the engines slow down. So it's, you know, it raises awareness, you know, about going fast through there. And there's an elementary school, Lawson, just right up the street from there. So it helps, you know, slow the traffic down before they get there. The point is Miranda's memorial brings all different kinds of awareness to Leavenworth. I want it to stay, the community wants it to stay. It's more than just a memorial. We go there every day to maintain it. We're Leavenworth residents. Two of my four girls graduated from here and unless we die, we plan on being here the rest of our lives and going to this spot every day. Then there's my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids who are all gonna continue visiting Miranda at that spot, keeping it looking nice. I understand the concern for the right of way and would like to quickly touch on that. I'm sweating too. <laughs> I was thinking, when you're driving down the road, what takes your eyes off the road? Depends on a few things, but for example, street signs, house, business addresses if you're trying to find a location, 
fast food signs that show their special 20 piece for such and such price, construction signs that have like two or three messages <coughs> that you have to keep staring at just to get the whole message. Amber alert signs on the highway, potholes, voting signs. There's always an abundance of voting signs. Are these distractions? When you see a kid on their bicycle or an animal running, don't you constantly look to make sure they're not gonna run out in front of you? We all encounter these things daily. We should know how to control the difference between a glance and a stare. It is literally a part of driving, kind of like glancing at your mirrors as you change lanes, while also making sure nobody stops in front of you. You can't file an insurance claim saying it's the city's fault for that billboard they allowed to be there while I was staring at it. But my solution just to compromise, if allowed, is to remove the garland, which we already did, that goes up the pole and put red blinking lights around the stop sign like you see in other places. But after speaking with Mr. Kramer, I now understand that's pretty much defacing public signs. I didn't even think about that. So I suggested maybe a funding or something for one of those official blinking stop signs, um, as long as it doesn't interfere with certain placements of those types of signs. I mean, it is down the street from a school. Just a thought, I don't know. But I would also like you all to understand why this is so important to us individually. Miranda was hit 60 feet from that stop sign with the bicycle I bought her five days prior to this. She was carried on the hood of that car for 60 feet before Amber Alexander swerved to get her off. This was caught by the camera at Lawson Elementary and we had to watch it during the trial. When she swerved to get Miranda off her hood, that stop sign is where she landed. Miranda lied there dying as Amber just drove away and then she tried covering it up. <clears throat> uh, she tried covering up what she had done, not once, but twice. What kind of person does that? She didn't even get any time for the tampering with evidence or fleeing the scene. She only got nine years and then probably get out less than that. What kind of justice is that for Miranda? Once Miranda landed by that stop sign, she was no longer responsive from that point forward. Because of one person's decision, me and my wife had to, I had to do what no parent should ever have to do. Miranda's brain swelled and had nowhere to go. The doctor said there was nothing we could do to correct this. You can't imagine what that feels like to hear. I really thought she was just hurt. I never thought, I never would have thought it was that bad. I just never imagined something like this could happen to us. We had to give them authorization to stop the machines that were keeping her alive. Can you imagine what it's like to have to make a decision like that? I'm forever haunted with this choice and the visuals of Miranda laying in that hospital bed as we went home without our child. A piece of us all was left at that hospital, a huge piece. I believe she died by that stop sign because I feel closer to her there. We all do. It's all we got left. It's our daily routine. It involves the cemetery and the memorial for the rest of our lives. Please, I'm begging you all, don't take this from us, from the community. Let's prove to everyone that Leavenworth is a city that cares about one another and that cares about our kids. And lastly, I'll finish with, think about this. What would it say to the kids of Leavenworth if this was ripped away? How would that make you feel if you was a child following this situation? Thank you all for your attention. Have a good evening. God bless you, Scott. Uh, Mr. Scott, my heart goes out to you and your family. I know we've been in contact over uh, these past few days, and you've also contacted our city manager. Uh, and the goal is to develop a plan where we can honor um, the legacy and the memory of your daughter in the long-term permanent way. Thank you, guys. Yeah. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you, Mr. God Lynch. bless you. to appoint to the library board uh, Rebecca Kellogg to a, an unexpired term ending April 30th, 2024. Second. Uh, motion has been seconded. Begin voting with uh, Commissioner Aye. 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 Uh, motion carried 4-0.
Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, if we want to, you, you all can certainly stay if you'd like. We're into regular business, or if you'd like to go, you can feel free to, to go, and we'll, we'll let a minute to let you leave. Uh, Thank, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, resolutions. Uh, resolution B, 2314, Redemption of Taxable General Obligation Bonds, uh, Series 2015-B. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Pro Tem and Commission, this is a good news story. This is uh, bonds that the city issued to purchase, demolish, and clear the site of the former Mata Inn building for the redevelopment, eventual redevelopment of the Hilton Home 2 Suites. Um, the project has exceeded expectations. We often ask at the beginning for a pro forma that shows the return on that investment. This has exceeded those expectations, and the item before you tonight is to authorize us paying off the bonds early um, based on revenues collected from uh, the growth or the, the value created by the hotel. So that's the action you would uh, take tonight is to uh, authorize staff to take those actions. Any questions or comments amongst the commissioners? Yeah. Do we know how much money are we going to save by paying them off early? Um, no, the interest, interest, I think interest. it's just a year of interest. I don't know. Twelve thousand seven hundred and some odd dollars. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Roberto. You're welcome. Uh, this requires a, a motion. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I uh, move to approve the paying off early of the bonds. Second. A motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 Uh, motion carried. Four zero. Uh, next item on the agenda, considered approval for a bid for a 2022 uh, pavement management project microservicing program. Uh, Brian Faust, our director of public works, will handle this item. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the item this evening is to consider the bid received for and possible award of the microsurfacing and crack sealing component of the 2022 Pavement Management Program. Uh, the main components for the 22 Pavement Management Program include microsurfacing, or our surface preservation, mill and overlay, and parking lot and upgrades at the library. Uh, the funding for the program covers the cost for project design, construction of the various components, a detailed evaluation of the pavement condition previously completed in 16 and 19, along with the next phase in developing a comprehensive pavement management program. Inspection of all these projects will be done by city staff. Uh, the microsurface and crack ceiling program for 2022 includes the streets highlighted in your packet and on the monitor. Uh, city forces have been working ahead of the project uh, to patch potholes and trim leaves that would interfere with the equipment. Uh, project plans were prepared by Alfred Benish and Company and the project was advertised for bid in the Leavenworth Times and Drexel Technologies. Uh, we did hold a mandatory pre-bid meeting on May 24th, and bids were open June 7th. Like several of the surface preservation processes, microsurfacing has a very limited number of contractors in each area that do this type of work. Uh, Vance Brothers was the sole bidder and did meet all bidding requirements. Vance has completed the grant and sale program for the city in the past and has completed that work within the time frame and per specifications. The company has also done numerous microsurfacing projects for other cities in Kansas and Missouri, and has the experience to satisfactorily perform the work here in the city of Leavenworth. I worked for, with them for years in other communities, so they're very good. Uh, their bid was 777487 uh, The engineer's estimate for the project was 808000 uh, work is expected to begin in late July, 
uh, or early August. Um, it can be completed in November. The first part of that will be crack sealing and base repairs. They want to do that ahead of the microsurfacing. The microsurfacing will actually occur later this fall. Uh, budget impacts uh, for 2022, uh, we programmed $2 million for the pavement management program, but we did have a carryover from 2021 of roughly 500,000. So you have a total of 2.5 million for all components. Uh, with the uncertainty in petroleum pricing, uh, the microsurfacing project was bid with a list of additional streets that could be added to the project with no change in unit price. Depending on the bids received for the mill and overlay component, which is scheduled to award July 12th, uh, we may be able to add additional streets, hopefully. Uh, the City Commission does generally award a contract to the lowest bidder if the bid is less than the engineer's estimate and whose evaluation by the city indicates that the award will be in the best interest of the city. While there was only one bidder, the bid was under the engineer's estimate and the contractor is extremely well qualified for this work. Mm -hmm. So staff does recommend the city commission award the 2022 pavement management microsurfacing and crack sealing program to Vance Brothers for the amount of $777,000 $487.64 and authorize the Public Works Director to add additional streets as funding permits with the approval of the city manager. Uh, only question that I have, thank you for the report. Uh, if we're able to add additional streets, how would we select those streets? Uh, those streets have already been identified okay. as, as alternates okay. um, and this was part of the base bid and then there's some expansion and the, so those streets are already ready to go okay. so funds allow. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> no. no. Well, I've already had somebody out there on my street. And uh, I asked him, hey, what's going on? And he told me, oh, we're going to be doing crack sealing here. Okay. So they're getting ready for it, as you said. All right. This requires a uh, motion. I move that uh, um, the awarding of the 2022 pavement management, microservicing, and crack sealing program <clears throat> To, uh, to Vance Brothers in the amount not to exceed $777,487.64. Second. The motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Hingula. Aye. 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 Motion carried, 4 0. Next item on the agenda first consideration ordinance for change of speed limits. Um, Eisenhower to Metropolitan. Again, this will be a public works director. Uh, this item this evening is to consider placing on first consideration an ordinance for updating the speed limits on 4th. Uh, during the May 17th Commission work session, findings of the speed study conducted along 4th Street between Eisenhower and Metropolitan were presented. After the presentation, there was a consensus to move forward with updating the speed limits based on the findings of the study. Uh, the recommendations are shown on the monitor. Um, basically, from Eisenhower to Limit, right now it goes from 45 to 35 uh, in that area. This would be a one constant speed of 40 is what's recommended. Uh, once you get north of the limit, uh, limit to spruce, right now that is uh, 30. It's recommended to go to 35. Uh, from spruce to Choctaw, right now it's 30. It's recommended to stay at 30 because that's where the road narrows. Uh, downtown would stay at 20. And then once you get north of Seneca, basically of Miami, right now it goes from 20 to 30. The recommendation is to go to 35. So uh, there are approximately 28 signs within uh, that section of the road. Roughly one half are the city's responsibility. It does actually cost about $175 to change out a sign. And so the cost is roughly $2,200 to change out our signs. We'll work with KDOT on changing out their portion. Um, <coughs> If this okay. is approved and goes into effect, uh, we've talked to uh, both KDOT and the engineer that did the traffic study, and they do recommend we put out message boards ahead of time to let people know that speed limit changes are coming, and we would also flag the new signs uh, for a few weeks so people are aware of them. Yeah. Good, thank you. Uh, any comments? Nope, I think no. so, they were good. KDOT will pay for the other ones? From they, limit they to Eisenhower? They or, yeah. they would. Right. Good. Uh, do we have a consensus to move forward? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda.
consider development agreement of 600 Cherokee. Uh, do I need a motion to open the land bank? So moved. Yeah. Motion has been second. <laughs> Did you well, move? I'll move this second. I'll uh, begin voting with Commissioner Hingula. Aye, open it. Aye. 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 Motion carried. We're open. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. And this item will be handled um, by primarily by the assistant city manager, uh, Penny Holler, and uh, both David Waters and I uh, available for uh, questions on this item. Good evening, members of the Land Bank Board. Um, included in your packet was the drafted development agreement for 600 Cherokee provided for your consideration tonight. Um, the structure of the agreement is really based on timelines to just ensure that this project starts and is completed in reasonable time frames. You will recall the proposal is to establish a, a microbrewery and tap room on site there. Um, Jennifer and, and Sean Wilcott have already been working with an architect and other contractors to comply with the Section 3.05 conditions for closing. Um, there's also um, options for you to consider as far as action tonight. Approve the development agreement, provide um, additional um, uh, terms for further negotiation, or to take no action. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have on the agreement, and Sean Wilcott also is present if you have any questions. <clears throat> so, Ms. Holler, uh, any, uh, could you just point out again the specific changes since last go around? So, this is the, the first time that the commission or that the land bank has uh, seen the legal agreement. I can certainly um, walk through some of the highlights. Um, what I recall from the um, presentation was. Um, about a $600 investment into the property as we were looking at um, what was appropriate to add to the contract. Um, it's included about a $500,000 uh, building permit and equipment value is included in the contract, so that's really kind of the expectation that we can expect of um, value that will be added to that structure. Yeah, I can tell David Waters wanted to jump in. Sure, no, I can, I sure. can go through a, a few things on this. This agreement is kind of, I like looking at this in kind of two parts. There's kind of a, a pre-closing and a post-closing aspect to it. For the pre and closing being the date that the land bank conveys the property over to the developer for it. Uh, certainly the developer in this case who wants to put some investment into it, uh, wants to do some due diligence, make sure that their plans and specifications that they want to do are acceptable to the city. Certainly the city has that interest as well to making sure that what is being proposed is on the up and up and is in compliance with all city regulations. And so there's a series of procedures and, and, uh, and steps in that title work being done, make sure there's clear title, make sure that the plan specifications are approved. Um, you know, the city's interest in this is that, you know, you are conveying property uh, for a nominal amount, mm -hmm. really, with the expectation that there will be investment following it. So the first part of this is making sure that the plans and specifications all work, that it's to the city's satisfaction, that the city's going to get the project that they want. And then when we have those types of things all cleared up, only then is there a closing and the deed is conveyed to the developer. Yep. From there, the agreement establishes that they have the developer has certain time periods within which they must perform on what they agreed to. And those are in Exhibit B. Uh, the very might be the last page of the agreement. That's the last, last page. page of the packet mm -hmm. that sets forth that you know by what point do they have to submit everything for final build out plans and what point do they have to commence those plans and complete those plans. And so those are in there as well. And those are binding agreements on the developer to comply with those, subject to force majeure and other standard provisions such as that to make sure that the uh, level of investment is what is going into. So they must provide a certificates of expenditures, project certificate, project completion certificate yep. that verifies that the dollars that the city thought were going into the project actually are going into the project because that's the way the city makes sure that this was a, a good conveyance on the city's part. So yep. there are you know, a slew of provisions in there um, such as you know typical stuff, compliance with code, uh, making sure that the building is properly insured at all times until final completion. Uh, what happens if they don't? There's a right of re-entry possibility in this case. It is not done that the city uh, may be able to pursue getting the property back uh, in some cases. Um, insurance bonds, all the, uh, non there's a non-assignment provision in there so the property cannot be just flipped to somebody else on day one after closing and that this developer will be the one that goes through it. So that's a lot of what the agreement spells out. Yeah. 
And thank you, David, for putting that so <laughs> eloquently. <laughs> He's done this once or twice. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Thank you. Are there any state requirements for the completion of this project? Kansas state uh, requirements? There could be some historical preservation requirements, but I believe the city generally handles that on behalf of the state historical preservation office between with your agreement to act on there. So there are historical preservation uh, issues that could come into play on this. The building is in the downtown historic district, so it's yeah. already um, in the process to be considered by mm -hmm. the local historic preservation right. commission. Okay. There's nothing else that the state can come in and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I mean, certainly there are state licensure Alcohol. requirements yeah. for, a, for, yes, for, 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 for a microbrewery and yeah. things like that. that um, yes, the, there would be state requirements there. Yeah, but that's, um, and there are certainly issues that, you know, failure to comply with those state requirements, the typical things you might think of serving to minors, um, as an example, could put at risk those licenses in the future. And so yeah. those would certainly need to be complied with. Sure. So once this is, uh, we approve this, then uh, the closing can occur, or are there other things? Not necessarily. Yet? What this what this allows then is for a period of time for. I mean, this is basically almost. In a lot of cases, this would be the first step. It mm -hmm. provides okay. a process for the parties to, you know, actually investigate and make sure that they have everything with closing. Now, I think both sides have put some time and money into it yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with the understanding that this would be approved. So, you know, sometimes, for example, if there were three or four uh, projects that were coming on and nobody knew until tonight which one the city might accept a development agreement on, um, that process is, might take a little bit longer because um, other people might not invest the upfront money uh, in that. So this sets up a process for those, um, that due diligence essentially is what we call it to take place and for a closing. Uh, to, to be take place then mm -hmm. shortly thereafter. I believe they've already are well within uh, those due diligence items. Good. Okay. Good. Still feeling pretty good about it, Mr. Wilcock? <laughs> a little later of a start than we were hoping for, but yeah. uh, uh, we're, we're very excited and we're ready to go. Yeah, good. all right, good deal. Yeah. We are yeah. too. That being said, are you still Sean, looking? Come on down. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look question. at that. He's in this, prepared. This is a, <laughs> Pretty much a yes or no question. Um, that that having been said, you still feel like you're going to do an Oktoberfest opening? Um, I, I will not go on record saying that, but it will be there. Um, October hasn't shifted. We have. Um, yeah. But that is still the, the full-blown intent on our side. We've been doing some things to how do we compensate for that, that calendar shift. Yeah. Um, I cannot commit to that at this point in time, but... Um, that, that is still a, I'd end up being a, a strong Christmas drive. party. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Christmas party would be nice, too. <laughs> cool. <laughs> we have ever, we, it's in our best interest as well to open as quickly sure. as possible. Sure, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, we wanna, we've, we've got contractors lined up. Um, they're, they're chomping at the bit as well. Um, we, we feel that we've done a lot of the upfront work that, that was being alluded to, kind of that due diligence up to this point in time. Yep. So um, uh, we, we haven't been sitting and waiting, but... Uh, yeah. The most exciting part is always the legal part, right? No offense, David. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Are you represented by a, by an attorney? We have an attorney out Good. of what, um, out of uh, Westmoreland. Yeah, they have looked over this. Yes. Good. So it's, it's acceptable to you. So it's acceptable to us. And obviously, <laughs> obviously, it's acceptable to you. <laughs> we've uh, we've agreed to it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man, just want to say thank you once again just for investing off into our community. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if there's no other comments, I uh, need a motion to adjourn as the... No, you would need a motion to act on this contract yeah. on behalf of the land bank. On behalf of the land bank. Because this contract first. is being entered into by the land bank. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. I move. Mayor yeah. Pro Tem. Go ahead. Sorry, I move that we uh, do act as, as written as of this point. Second. Motion has been second. I'll uh, begin voting with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 Motion carried for zero. And now you may move to recess out of the land bank and bank back into your full city commission meeting. Yeah, I move to recess out of land bank and go back into full city commission. Second. Motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Hingle. Aye. 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 Motion carried for zero. Thank uh, you. Yep, yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah, We're looking much. forward to it. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Martin. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I move to uh, approve the claims for May 21st, 2022, 
through June 10th, 2022, in the amount of $1,593,269.52, net amount for payroll number 11, effective June 3rd, 2022, in the amount of $338,632.66, no police and fire pension. Second. Motion has been seconded. Begin voting with Commissioner Martin. Aye. 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 Motion carried, 4 0. Uh, we're going to go around the table, starting with. Uh, I do. I have some a few updates for the commission and the community, um, some of the projects we're working on. So the splash pad, um, we expect the actual installation of the pad to start next week. Uh, the contractors that do that, um, are they only do that, so they, go, they have their jobs lined up. They were moving really well on their last one, and they got hit with a bunch of rain. They were a little bit north of us, and so we expect them on site next week, and then it's pretty quick after that. Um, I still want to open this summer. Um, I wish it was open now, but they've been, they've been a little bit behind. Uh, we anticipate right now, uh, two weeks from tonight, to have potentially both the Stubby restroom and Havens Park restroom and parking lot before the commission for uh, adoption. <laughs> we will for sure have the Stubby. Havens could be kicked one week, but uh, we're pretty good on that. Um, and I'm happy that uh, based on the engineer's estimate and the bidding environment, um, we had a not to exceed amount, hoping to get the Stubby shelter added to that project, and we will be able to add the Stubby shelter. Um, so those are some really uh, cool projects going on right now. An update, uh, Woman Aquatic Center, uh, everything is going really well out there. Um, we are one of the few communities that have a really good full uh, lifeguard staff. So we have a really good pool manager out there, um, and everything is going well at Woman Aquatic Center. A couple other quick notes, just because we've talked about it so much. The Home Depot easements were obtained last Thursday through all the processes that we had to go through for that small piece of ground, but that's, that's complete. So the city's obligations for that intersection project are done. Um, and we look forward to that project. Uh, Mr. Faust mentioned, but excited about the mill and overlay, awarded July 12th. Uh, hopefully we get good bids on that. We did um, what's called index the asphalt, so um, we'll award a bid, but then the, the prices of the asphalt and the, the amount of work is going to be determined by the asphalt price when they start the project. We did that to increase the flexibility of people willing to bid. If you don't do that, then you'll get a fewer number of contractors because mm -hmm. they don't want to be locked into a price. So we did elect to index the asphalt pricing, which could fluctuate the, the price a little bit uh, when the work actually starts. Um, and I'm just going to, oh, one more update before I uh, end with something kind of fun. Uh, Municipal Service uh, Center in Cody parking lots will start July 5th, 6th, and 7th. Work out there. Um, the Cody Park Bank Stabilization Project looks really good, and we're going to redo that parking lot. Um, and then finally, we're working with the school district on a Five Mile Creek Bank Stabilization Plan. But we are holding that right now because of the endangered Plains Minnow. And the state does not allow any work in that creek until after August 31st, which is the conclusion of the mate, mating season for the minnows. So Plains, minnow. that's <laughs> the stuff minnow. that we deal with sometimes. Oh, uh, yeah. But a lot of good stuff going on. So that's all I have. Uh, can you give us a quick update on the mowing? Yeah. Um, so uh, mowing has been an issue. Uh, briefly, the city issues two contracts. One is city clusters, five clusters of city-owned property. We had our mowing contractor um, bow out at the last minute. We did uh, sign a contract a couple weeks ago. They've made it through all five clusters for the first mowing and starting on the second one. The other one is code enforcement mowing. These are not city properties. These are property owners in town, uh, either vacant property owners or property owners who have elected not to mow their own properties. The city does that and assesses. We also did not have a contractor for that. I'd like to thank the community. We sent a Facebook message out and said, hey, mowers out there, this is an opportunity uh, for work. We did have a couple reach out to us, insurance, uh, W-9s, and sign contracts. So they will start um, mowing at the end of this week on some code enforcement property. So uh, appreciate the public bearing with us. But um, it's tough finding contractors right now. So uh, I think I think we're there. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Commissioner Englund. Uh Just a couple of things. Ms. Uh, Deputy City Manager, you, you know what I'm going to ask about? You, I hope it's bird scooters. So yeah, <laughs> that's exactly it. Can you give me a, give us an update on bird scooters, what they're doing? I saw a truck uh, late last week. I was going to say flying up K7. Yeah, it was going rather rapidly to get them delivered or something. There were, I guess, about 20 more 
uh, bird scooters in the back end of that. It was a basically a pickup truck, but large. And uh, it was coming up to Leavenworth, and I was wondering, is that more? Is that uh, replacements? Or so I don't know what us? that particular truck was, but I can say um, that's the work we would expect the local contractors to do: is to look at um, do they need maintenance. Have they been charged? So that would be part of their normal activity is to pick up scooters around town, yep. replace them, pop them up at certain locations. So that, that shouldn't be anything unusual. I haven't heard anything that the fleet has been um, increased. So to my knowledge, it's still sitting at 95, which is what I shared with the commission 95. a few weeks ago. Um, I think the data that I already shared, too, was um, with about a month look back, it was about 1,800 rides had been taken in the city. Um, there had been hundreds of riders, if that's helpful. Um, I'd have to get the exact details. I don't know that off the top of my head, but they're, they're getting used. Um, average ride somewhere around a mile, so they're not going very far in the city. Um, I've seen between maybe half a mile and 1.5 miles. So um, they're, they're certainly being used and being used as a form of transportation to get around. Um, I think I've had one complaint in the last three weeks, and it was just um, they didn't understand the cost as they had uh, a, a parent had done bird scooters for some 18-year-old um, older children and um, wasn't uh, thrilled with the, the cost of what that had turned out to be. So that's really the only um, feedback that I've heard on that. So thank you. Yep. Good. Thank you. Is that it? Um, yeah. Yeah. I know you just <laughs> I know you're just in the audience, but I want to ask you, if you don't mind, Ms. Scheidt, why'd they cancel the uh, Queen concert? Yep, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Was the weather, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> like I guess bad they're saying. The other night. We had a tornado. Is that what it was? <laughs> I, no, we, I was driving down here. I drove past uh, uh, Haymarket Square. I'm like, what happened? Where's the? We were notified about eight fifteen or so with a main, um, um, mutual savings volunteer that's coordinating everything on their end because yeah. they're the title sponsor. What about the weather? And my first response: Well, we still usually hunker down and wait for it to pass, but. We had a professional stage coming at 12.15. The band was coming at 1. We were watching the radar all, all morning. Um, and so, um, you know, we had to make a decision. Um, I'm sorry it didn't happen, um, but there were many things canceled. I know in Kearney, Missouri, the, um, their outdoor activities were canceled. The theater in the park in Shawnee Mission was canceled. Starlight was canceled. So it was mainly that threat of severe weather. I mean, you could see it on all the stations. We were looking at the National Weather Service. We very rarely do that, but we had a lot on the line, uh, especially the liability for all of their uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and so because it was a high-profile band, a lot more of our dollars and sponsor dollars were in this concert. We made that decision among the three of us. And uh, so we're working on rescheduling that. It will be rescheduled. It's just trying to figure out the band, the stage, uh, MSAs, volunteers. So, yep. Good. I, I may not look like it, but I'm a big Queen fan. Good. And, I just watched a biography of him the other Me night too. on the Story Channel, and uh, you know we are glad that they were willing to reschedule without a penalty. So oh, um, oh, you know, good. yeah, that is good. good. Glad to hear it. Yep. Um, Thank you. I, I think we need to come up with some way of getting the word out that it's been canceled. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I got to admit, I didn't look on Facebook. But, well, uh, we put it on our website. We put it okay. on our phone message. We put it on Facebook. Yeah. I got it everywhere. We reached out to everything we could, other than I yeah. knew I couldn't reach out to Stubby Park Message Board or the banks because yeah, they wouldn't have been there. Yeah, for sure. And um, I'd have to go back and look at my schedule to see when it was showing. But, um, you know, even if we would reschedule, and let's say um, in a long time ago when we would do festivals, we had the community center gym as a backup. Nobody's going to come anyway yeah. if the weather's really bad. And so yeah. then everybody loses because the concessionaires don't make any profit. You got yeah. a few people playing, you know, a 
big band playing to 25 people. So, you know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Um, we feel bad for the Suburban. They were our food vendor. I had no idea they were closing the restaurant on Saturday to prepare for mm -hmm. this, but we talked to Jason and, um, you know, we've talked to everybody involved and uh, mm -hmm. we'll make it right, whatever we need to do. But anyway, it was, uh, you know, chances are if we'd gone through with it, that big storm would have hit Leavenworth. I don't know. Well, you can bet on it. Mother Nature, that's why I have gray hair. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yep, Thank we you. will get it rescheduled. Well, now I can tell people. I keep getting the ad. Thank question. Mr. Martin? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Holler, any way we can get maybe for a future study session uh, just some more breakouts of the reporting for bird scooters, I would like to know. Kind of just if we dial in on a few things to look at on a monthly basis, so total riders, distance, mm -hmm. money spent, all those okay. things, just so we have something, a basis to, to measure that with. Um, you can absolutely get that added onto an agenda. That'd be great. Thank you. And then uh, just real quick, I want to let folks know, had some very good conversations with uh, different people in our community about uh, potential uses for some of the ARPA funds we've been talking about and uh, really been some very creative ideas, uh, things for our, our local businesses here and, and individuals and property owners and uh, what we can do for neighborhoods and potential street improvements and just various things. So I'd like to say please keep the ideas coming because uh, uh, we do want to make some decisions on that pretty quick. So that's all I've got. Um, speaking of ARPA funds, we got budget hearings coming up pretty soon, and and um, I know there's a lot of things to consider, but because there is such a, um, what is the word? Oh, God, I lost it. <laughs> um, everything going up in price. Oh, inflation. inflation. Oh, such a huge in inflation. We need to really look closely at what we're going to be spending yeah. our money on and mm -hmm. and be budgeting for that because we don't know what's gonna what's yeah. gonna happen with that things are are really getting um, difficult for everybody um, I wanted to say something about Juneteenth um, we should have had Joanna mrs. Schultz who is the director of the NAACP was here earlier um, the Juneteenth is on Saturday um, the celebration the parade starts at 10 o'clock uh, lineup will be nine o'clock at Broadway in Delaware and um, they'll be going up Esplanade. The parade will go up Esplanade and, um, and go down to Doherty Park. And then the festival is actually from noon to 5, and there will be lots of stuff for the kids and food and all kinds of vendors. And I'll be there painting faces, too. So <laughs> come over and have your face painted. And anyway, that's Juneteenth. And one more thing. Do we hear? Have we heard anything about the buses? People are asking me all the time. I have not heard any update on the buses. I, I will can't reach out believe. again this week. Um, we did get a Ford Transit van notification for our animal control vehicle. Is that correct? And so maybe that's a good sign. That is not the same thing, but right. it's, it's how long? How long has that been in the process? So since last fall. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Okay. So uh, hopefully right. stuff is moving. All right. I just have to keep asking because people keep asking me. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Anyway, thank you. That's all I have. Yep, thank you. Um, the only thing I want to say is, man, let us continue to serve one another, love one another, and pray for each other. Uh, God bless you, and Leavenworth is the best city in Kansas. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. All in favor? Second. All in favor, aye. say aye. aye. <laughs> meeting adjourned. Adjourned. <laughs> I'll be 